So I have a couple great reasons today to talk about Skyward Sword HD. First is that we're giving away two copies of the game. Head down to the description to enter for that. Good luck. Uh, secondly is that Nintendo today decided to finally give us the information we've been begging for for months. Information that I wish we would have got back at E3. And that is what exactly are the quality of life improvements that were referenced on the official website out in uh, the Skyward Sword UK website. Uh, what are these improvements beyond the Amiibo stuff? Because it suggested there was more. Well, today Nintendo finally told us, so I'm going to go over those improvements. I'm going to give my thoughts on those improvements. And then we have to revisit an age-old question at this point. Is Skyward Sword HD worth $60? I mean, if you win the giveaway, it's free, so that's obviously worth it. But for you to go out day one and spend 60 bucks, for you to go out in three years and spend 60 bucks because Nintendo doesn't lower prices, will the game be worth it? Well, let's talk about that. All right, so today Nintendo put out about a minute and 38 second, I believe is the exact amount of time, uh, trailer that was specifically targeted at quality of life enhancements. And they went over a bunch of stuff. Some stuff I've actually mentioned in the past would be good to improve upon, uh, and they went there. So let's get into this. So they start off the trailer and they say, hey, fee fi fo fum <laughs> their help is optional. Her help is optional. Uh, so this is a big character in the game. I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, essentially what happens throughout the game is there'll be times, kind of like with Navi back in Ocarina of Time, that you get a little notification that, hey, you know, she's here and can help you, uh, and it will make your hilt glow on the back of your character, uh, make the Master Sword hilt glow. So, uh, if you decide to then hit the button prompt that brings that person up, just like with Navi, uh, you will end up getting four different options. Those options are... Objective, which I presume is just showing whatever your current mainline quest objective is. Um, advice, analysis, and then never mind, which is obviously how you back out. Uh, if you do select advice, which they do show, uh, it gives you four more in options, including a summary, a hint, never mind, again, to exit, and then rumors. Now, rumors are part of this game. It's usually something you had to go all the way back to Skyloft. Uh, in order to get access to the rumors. Um, the rumors sometimes give you hints. Sometimes the rumors are also fake. It, it, it's pretty interesting, uh, the whole rumor system built into this game that Nintendo hasn't even advertised, but it is part of the game. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and obviously, uh, the, in, in the video, they do show them selecting hints, but they don't show you what the hints are. Uh, so I'm not sure if this is a new hint system they've put into the game, or if this is just the same old advice that fifi fo fum used to give you before. So... Uh, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with this hint system and if it's completely new or if it's just repurposing uh, advice and hints already given by that character. Uh, then they go on to say that advanced control options, which we already knew about. This means motion or buttons. Uh, they also talk about how the gameplay is smoother, a.k.a. 60 FPS. Again, these are, are a couple things we already knew about, but they're just reminding you, hey, look, there are button controls, and they're going to remind you of the button controls at every turn, and they're going to remind you this is a 60 FPS, which factually is a smoother gameplay experience and is a quality of life improvement. I mean, if you've ever, I, I don't know if you have, but if you've ever had a chance to experience Breath of the Wild on PC at 60 FPS, you'll know that it just, it, it's just that extra bit of crispness and smoothness to the gameplay uh, that hopefully a, a certain unannounced system might bring. All right, next up, um, they talk about uh, fast-forwarding dialogue by pressing A. This is like a basic feature in modern games today, being able to just fast-forward through dialogue, especially if it's like, you know, say you're at a shop, right, and, and there's that little shop preamble before you can buy something, just being able to fast-forward through that uh, by just pressing A, which is the same button to move on to the next thing. Yeah, that's uh, th That, to me, is, is basic, uh, but I'm glad that they decided to include it because they obviously didn't have to. That's going to make the gameplay experience just a smidge better, especially for repeated dialogue sequences, uh, like I mentioned in a shop. Uh, they also streamlined item information. This, is, to me, is one of the biggest changes they've done. Um, is one of the one of the things that was really frustrating about Skyward Sword back in the day is you would run into something, whether it's a heart piece or a uh, stamina, um, you know, blob or or whatever it is, right? A bug, and it would like tell you the information on it the first time you run into it. But, and then you'd be fine the rest of your gameplay session. But if you saved and came back and, and into it and reloaded the save file, it would have to tell you that information again. And it was quite annoying, um, especially for some of the basic things like the stamina stuff. Like we obviously know 
after just a few times that that's the stamina thing. We don't need to be told what it is every single time. And it would interrupt gameplay, and it was kind of annoying. Um, and they didn't have this problem in Breath of the Wild, uh, but it was a problem in Skyward Sword. And it was really weird since it really wasn't a problem in prior Zelda games before it. So I didn't know why they. this was just like... It almost felt like a bug, to be honest. But they have streamlined it, as they said, and they do show um, running into the stamina item and then saving, quitting, reloading your save file and showing them running into that same stamina item and having it not pop up by telling you what it is. Obviously, you're always able to go into the menu and figure that stuff out as well if you do happen to forget. But yeah, I, duh. Like, this is uh, something they needed to do. Uh, if they didn't do it, that would have been very disappointing. So, thank you. And obviously, all this stuff, by the way... Well, we'll get into this in a moment. Sorry. Let's get into the rest of the stuff they mentioned. Uh, skippable cutscenes. Again, I don't think first playthrough that matters much for people. Well, for Skyward Sword veterans that have, that have played it, you know, four or five, six times. I've only played through it twice. Uh, but, you know, four or five, six times, and, you know, you don't care about the story, per se. You just like the gameplay uh, because you already know everything. Cool. Skippable cutscenes. Hit the minus button. Um, you know, I think skippable cutscenes should be in every game anyways as an option for those that just don't care. Um, on Twitter, though, they do note that these tweaks, the tweaks in this video... Uh, and more have been added. Now, they don't go over the amiibo functionality, so it's possible that that's what the and more means, or there's possibly even more quality of life improvement tweaks. If you guys remember, we didn't know about the reduction in the Tears of Light quest in Twilight Princess HD until we actually played Twilight Princess HD and saw it in the previews and reviews, so it's possible there might be something like that in this game that we're just not made aware of. So, this gets to the massive looming question. Knowing all this, is Skyward Sword HD worth $60? Now look, uh, as with anything, the value of any product is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, so Skyward Sword HD might have already been worth $60 to some fans without any of these quality of life improvements. Um, and even with it, for other people, including these improvements, it still might not be worth $60. But here's what I will say. This is obviously a step beyond what they did with, say, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. No, they did pack three games in, but basically Super Mario 3D All-Stars didn't really include very many improvements. All they really did was ran the games in an emulator and HD'd them where they could, and that was kind of it. They did make, a, a, you know, uh, was it Sunshine? They made it widescreen, but outside of that, they really didn't make any changes, and in fact, because of the bugs from emulation, some ways you could argue some of the games were worse. Obviously, like Super Mario 64, uh, really <laughs> didn't look that great. Um, obviously, it's better than the original, but you know, some people were saying they, they even like the, the 3DS version better or whatever. So I don't know. The point is that, yeah, um, the, this game has had more work put into it than those. Now, has it had the same amount of work put into it as the Wind Waker? I'd probably say no, because it looked like they actually messed with the graphics engine in the Wind Waker HD. Uh, but remember, that was also done by the main Zelda team, and I got an idea that Skyward Sword HD is not. I think Skyward Sword HD is probably created by Tantalus or some similar Grezzo or something like that, uh, not made by the core Zelda team. So I got a feeling that, obviously, when that happens, you don't get the same amount of detail in, in the uh, editing. And when they were doing the Wind Waker HD, to Nintendo's credit, they... It was the first time the Zelda team experimented with HD Zelda, so uh, yeah, they obviously were, were experimenting a lot with graphics engines and all that. Uh, so I, now look, these are more improvements than any of those games. So you could argue if you want to break down each of those games in Super Mario 3D All Stars is worth 20 bucks each, uh, which some don't think that's fair, but let's just say for the sake of argument it is. And then you compare that to Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword HD clearly had has have more work put into it. Uh, clearly has had more changes put into it, and clearly is probably worth more than 20 bucks. But is it worth 60? I don't know. This is the thing. I put out a meme yesterday. It was just a little meme joke about um, comparing Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword uh, to having um, carnal relations with another person, having an adult uh, relationship, typically in a bedroom with another person, and how um, you know Breath of the Wild, you know, can be like having the absolute greatest experience in that moment. Uh, but even when that experience is quote unquote bad. Um, and then it showed Skyward Sword, it's still pretty damn good, right? So the idea was even a bad Zelda game is still a really good Zelda game. Even a bad you-know-what for an adult is still actually probably a really damn good time in comparison to just not having it at all, right? Like, you'd rather have this than not, right? That's kind of uh, what it was saying. But the thing is, I didn't make that meme. I just thought it was kind of funny, so I posted it up. Uh, I, I do think Breath of the Wild is better than Skyward Sword, but Skyward Sword is still like in my top five, top six Zelda games. I love Skyward Sword. I think it's an amazing game. I think it's massively underrated. I think that game, 
Zelda 2 and the Oracle games and Diminished Cap. Like those are kind of like my four or five games that are in the Zelda series that I feel like are massively underrated. Although Triforce Heroes is probably up there now too. I think Triforce Heroes got a bad rap, um, an unfair rap, but that's besides the point. Um, I don't, doesn't mean I think Triforce Heroes is top five or something, but still I, Skyward Sword HD is a very good Zelda game. It's just a very different Zelda game. It's different from your contemporary Zelda games, but it's also different from say, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild. It's very much its own thing. And now a lot of that stemmed from the fact that it was motion controlled, uh, and not just motion control, but when you did get to the quote unquote overworld, which the overworld itself is actually probably the sky that you could, you can freely fly around the sky, but to do anything, you got to fall through specific spots in the clouds or use the amiibo to transport back um what's interesting is that once you're on the ground um you're very you're really restricted and they did something different in this game where the ground is basically all a dungeon the entire thing's a dungeon from the very beginning all the way up to the dungeon is its own dungeon and then the dungeon itself is a dungeon it's basically a game that if you love dungeons it's like the polar opposite of breath of the wild right because people consider Breath of the Wild to not really have traditional dungeons, right? Um, oh, it does. Technically, it has four traditional dungeons, but those dungeons aren't, you know, they're, they're very samey feeling, um, mostly from an aesthetic thing, not necessarily from puzzles. Uh, and obviously, the boss fights, from an aesthetic reason, not necessarily because they're factually the same. But yeah, there's a lot of sameness feel to it, uh, to the point that it feels like there's really only one dungeon, maybe, and then a bunch of mini dungeons. Well, this game is the polar opposite. It's dungeon heaven. It's just dungeon. The overworld of dungeon. The dungeons are a dungeon. It's dungeon, 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 dungeon. You're just, if you love dungeons, this is the game for you. There are some parts that I, I think could be fixed. Uh, I don't want to get into it because then it might get to spoilers, uh, story spoilers, but there's a certain fight in the game. Uh, a couple fights actually that are repeated several times. Uh, and one of them in particular really feels like the same sort of fight every single time and kind of pointless. Maybe that is something they've they fixed up. The other one that's repeated, at least the fight's a little different every time. So you could argue it kind of makes sense. But I don't know. I don't want to spoil too much. All I know is, to me, Skyward Sword HD was already worth $60. But I'm also biased to not just Nintendo, but to Zelda. Uh, because while you can argue that this game is not as good as, say, the Spyro Trilogy, not as good as the Crash Bandicoot stuff, that stuff that other companies have done, not as good as... Um, you know, The Last of Us Remastered, or, or whatever the case may be. Whatever other remaster, uh, remake, uh, obviously Final Fantasy VII Remake being on a whole different level. Uh, you could argue that, yeah, I mean, even when you look at Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, right? Like, that looks like it's on a whole other level. I get it, okay? I get that there are levels to this. But ultimately, to me, Zelda is my favorite IP. It's my favorite franchise. It contains my favorite game of all time. No, not every single Zelda game is, you know on my favorites list. Uh, as an example, my second favorite game of all time is Secret of Mana. So you're already literally at number two going outside of even Nintendo themselves, right? That's a Square Enix property. Uh, so yeah, there, there's a lot of variance in, you know, if I ever made like a top 10 games of all time for myself, uh, be a very, there'd be a lot of variety in that top 10. You'd be surprised at the wide breadth of games I actually enjoy and the, and the various types of IPs I actually enjoy, uh, let alone the genres and gameplay styles. But the thing is, when it comes to Zelda, um, I am biased. And Skyward Sword, to me, I don't have a way to play it right now. I don't own a Wii, and I don't own a Wii U. So even if I bought a secondhand copy of Skyward Sword for cheaper, I can't really play it anyways. And in addition, it doesn't look that good on the TV. Because on the TV, even on the Wii U, it's still just a 480p output. So it's still that blown up, which doesn't look good to me. What I like the most about these trailers, the more and more they show, is just, damn, the game looks crisp. It looks good in HD. And it's 60 FPS. 60 FPS and actually being at 1080p while docked, that to me is the selling point. All this other stuff's like fluff to me. I don't need it to justify 60 bucks to me because I don't have another way to play it. And it's going to cost me more than 60 bucks to play because I got to buy the system and I got to buy the game. Well, if I already have a system and I want to replay a Skyward Sword, it's much cheaper just to buy it for the system I already have, right? That's just reality. Now you could say, well, go emulate it, Nate. That's fine, but the emulation is not perfect anyways, right? Because you got to use motion controls and remap them the buttons. And it's a little bit cumbersome. It is possible. It has been done by fans, but it is more cumbersome than just using the official version of it. Why go through all that when I can, you know, one, I'm playing it illegally since I don't own a copy. And two, what the hell? I'm obviously illegally downloading a ROM because I don't own a copy. I'm not making it myself. So I'm just dabbling in lots of illegal territory when honestly, I could just literally 
literally buy the game for 60 bucks and be done with it. I'm giving away two copies. I'm going to spend 180 bucks on Skyward Sword, just the games, <laughs> before it's all said. Actually, I gave away a copy during E3 as well, so that's a hundred eighty. That's $240 uh, in Skyward Sword. I've given, uh, you know, I'm buying in terms of four copies of games, three that I'm giving away, one for me. And then you got the Amiibo that I gave away, the Skyloft Amiibo. Then you got, you know, obviously, uh, just uh, there's a, the, the Skyward Sword Joy-Cons, gave away two of those. Like, there's just a lot here. So my grand takeaway is this. I think Scalper Sword Issue was already worth $60 for me. For the mass consumer, I think the biggest argument for Scalper Sword HD at $60 bucks is that it didn't sell very well the first time around. So a majority of people who played Breath of the Wild haven't played this game, and it will feel like a brand new Zelda game to them. The big concern there is, well, it's not Breath of the Wild 2, and if people go in expecting that, it's going to be a disappointing. But then people didn't feel disappointed after Link's Awakening came back out, and they didn't even put HD in front of that, uh, even though it was basically the same game, but they HD'd it and put new graphics. Like I, It was more of a remake or remaster than this is. So I think that this game was already worth 60 to me. To the general consumer, I think uh, if you are someone who's already played the game, man, you know, it could be a tough sell either way. Uh, and if you're someone who hasn't played the game, I think just being able to play the game, again, on a system you own, was already a selling point for 60. Again, compared to other stuff, I get it. Okay, I'm not saying that this is good. I, I, I'm not saying I don't want Nintendo to do more. It's just for me, with my bias and how much I enjoy this game and the fact I can't play it in any other way right now, you know, I don't mind plopping down 60. Apparently, I don't mind plopping down 240 plus the Joy Cons plus the Amiibo given away. And that's not even buying a set for myself, which I'd like to do. <sighs> so, my conclusion is it's worth the money for me but i understand if it's totally not worth it for you give me your thoughts on these quality of life improvements have they finally done enough for you to buy this game down in the description and if they haven't what more can they do to convince you uh, i think besides adding new content i think if uh nintendo themselves isn't making it uh we can kind of rule out the potential for new content obviously new content's always a selling point you can argue that's what made bowser's fury you know super Mario 3d world worth it at 60 was the bowser's fury mode like yeah that might have been worth 40 bucks on its own and then you're paying 20 for the other game that's that's actually a nice combo uh they're not doing that this time so that's another point you can say hey hey look at what they did for the last game they brought out uh and they didn't do it for this so again i'm, I'm very interested in this debate um it's not going to change my mind because my mind was already sold the moment they unveiled it thank you guys so much for tuning in i am nintendo robo gents from nintendo prime and uh, I'll get ready for all the click clack shill comments down in the comments below, even though I literally said I understand why people might not think it's worth the money. Sorry, I can't help the way that I am. I'm buying it and I'm going to love it and I'm going to be streaming it on this channel probably day one.